Mary Beth is going to play a, a quick game with us, which is really exciting. And um, it's uh, we're, we're going to do a little fact or fiction. Um, so if you want to put your answers in the chat, please do. Awesome. So our first fact or fiction is stress is always bad. Do you guys think that's a fact or do you think that that might be fictional? We have one vote for fiction. Yep. Yep. You guys are too good. Um, but really the truth is stress can help us function and it can be a great motivator in the short term. So it's all about how we control stress, whether it or not it's going to be harmful to us. And if we are in control of our stress, any stressful situation will be seen as a challenge that we can overcome and kind of keep it moving. We have another. Um, do you think stress prevents good performance? Stress prevents good performance. Is that fact or fiction? We got some more fictions. So we got a couple, we got some, a mixed bag and it kind of is a little bit of a mixed bag. So I really like this graphic that we see that if we don't have any stress, if nothing is really pressing, it can make us kind of inactive, laid back. We're not necessarily producing or doing the things that we want to do or achieving the things we want to do. But there is this kind of optimum stress area, but it does max out. And so you want to stay in this kind of green to yellow region because it can really spur you on to do things that you might not have done otherwise, especially if you're undertaking risks in uh, the business world or whatever it might be trying to build something. But if you let it go too much, you're overloaded or burned out, you can have a lot of really harmful things. So we might be exhausted, we might have anxiety or panic attacks or a lot of anger, and it just, it's not sustainable. And so it all depends on where we kind of are in that stress um, curve. And then our last one, so a little stress can help improve performance if you think about athletes or tests or whatever people might be trying to really build up and perform for. A little bit of stress is good. It means you care. That's what we tell a lot of our 4-H'ers before big projects and things or pitches. Um, so the next one, do you think only tragedies cause stress? That's, that's right. That's right. So what many would consider to be a, a positive event can be a source of stress. So things like starting a new job, moving, getting married or remarried or having your child get married, having grandkids, retirement holiday seasons, vacations, they can all have a little bit of stress involved. So it's not inherently um, bad. So we want to take some time to actually define stress because it's something that we all say, I'm stressed. If you ask someone how they are, they say I'm stressed. And so um, I'm going to let Adriana kind of define that for us. Yeah. So when we talk about stress, sometimes we can't identify it, right? We just feel it, you know, it's just an overarching feeling. Well, when we talk about stress, it can be that physical response to, to a change, you know, that tightening of your shoulders, the racing of your heart, it can be emotional, it can be mental, um, and it can be all different things from any kind of situation that makes you feel that stress. You can, it can be something that's really good and exciting, or it can be something that makes you frustrated or nervous. Um, and then it can also, it can be a good thing. So like Mary Beth just said, when we are talking about, you know, having people move forward, try new things in life, it's great, but it can also be very, very harmful. So that short-term stress, you know, that is normally pretty good. So it'll either, you know, get us through a really big presentation, or maybe we see something dangerous where when we're on a walk and we, we kind of hightail it out of there. Um, episodic stress is something that happens over and over. So maybe every time that I get a phone call from somebody at work, and sometimes we all have that person, um, if we get a phone call from somebody, you have that immediate feeling of tension. So episodic stress can be one thing that happens over and over, and we can really find ways to fix that. Long-term or chronic stress is where it really starts to get dangerous. And we're about to kind of talk about those effects of long-term stress in your body, but it's just that constant feeling of stress. All right. Um, so now we have a little activity. I'm not sure if we're going to actually go through, but we're going to show you. It's one of the handouts um, that we sent you this morning. Um, I just have to find it because I have so many things open. <laughs> 
Um, stress less, live more handouts. There we go. Uh oh, where are you going? If you guys have done these kind of distance learning things, you know that it is, there's lots to click and it doesn't always make sense. Um, <laughs> we've okay. always, uh, we've got some different things going on. It's, it happens. Um, but just while Mary Beth is looking for it, you know, you're going to see in those handouts, it'll be sort of like a small little chart. Oh, there it is. And it's just going to be that life index scale. So the life index scale is just kind of a, a mini stress test, right? So you're going to take a look whenever you have time in your personal time to just kind of, you know, take a breath, do some introspection and feel what's making, you know, what's going on in your life. So, you know, something like death of a close family member, we would check that off. Um, or change in financial state or business readjustment, both of those which can be positive or negative, we would check those off. Um, the change in living conditions, so if you get a new house, you would check that off. Um, even vacation or Christmas, uh, which we would think of as wonderful things, we'd check those off. And so all of these things, you know, we just kind of check off what's going on in our own lives and we total them up just right there at the bottom. And then once we have that total, um, unfortunately, there's there's no checkbox here for global pandemic, but I think we can go ahead and add that pretty high up on the list. Um, but once we have that uh, number, uh, we're going to just take a look at that and it kind of gives you an idea about the amount of stress that's going on in your life and the likelihood of just uh, an illness near in the future. So that could be getting a cold, that could be a chronic issue, something like blood pressure. Um, so we want to make sure that we just try to manage it. We can't really change the things that are happening in our life, but we can try to work on how we respond to it. So um, go ahead and fill this out. If you guys have any questions about it after you work on it, um, please feel free to send us um, some emails. For sure. Okay. Back to the slides, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we talked a little bit um, about stress and how, you know, we did the factor fiction, how sometimes it's good and sometimes it helps our performance and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so when it comes to stress and the things that make us stressed, over 60% of adults suffer negative health effects from stress. Can you guys in the chat give me a couple ideas of what those negative health effects might be? Depression, yeah. All kinds of different things, right? So we could feel depressed, we could feel anxious, we could have uh, an excited heart rate. So sadness, anxiety, eating habits, weight gain, weight loss. Really good, Janice, thank you. Um, it's, it's a big thing. Uh, stress can really give us negative health effects. And because of that, 42 Americans per year miss at least 30 days of work because of stress, anxiety, or related stress disorder. So those chronic diseases that kind of follow stress or those, you know, acute diseases that follow stress. So maybe, you know, you're clenching your jaw or you're grinding your teeth. So things like that, that, you know, would count. Um, and then on the business side, our business owners, $300 billion in America is spent annually um, from employers in stress-related health care and missed work. Um, so absenteeism, you can't come to work because you're feeling that stress. Um, so we really, really want to help make uh, our employees feel a lot better. So, right, so we talked about this. So you said depression, sadness, anxiety, um, you know, panic attacks, um, heart disease and high blood pressure. So things from that constant stress, that feeling of heart racing. Um, I see that you have change in eating habits. So weight gain or weight loss. So that could lead to obesity, type two diabetes, high cholesterol, um, any kind of other chronic illness due to unhealthy coping mechanism. Maybe lung disease from smoking or liver diseases from alcohol. Um, and then you also have accidents. So stress, I don't know about you, I get kind of foggy. My brain, when I get stressed out, I can't really think through things. So it also really increases on the job workplace accidents as well as accidents outside of work. All right. And act, the, the large thing that we have here, um, this big, big thing, is three out of four doctor's uh, visits are stress related. 
So if you think about it, if you think about your, you're not your annual visits, but all those other little things that we're doing, it's just from a lot of chronic stress on the body. So we really want to find our ways to control that. Yes. Um, so, sorry, I didn't realize that these would all come up one at a time. Um, but there are lots of signs and symptoms that you might be looking for to kind of see if your, your stress is getting to a level where you might want to really amp up the self-care, amp up what you might be doing to take care of yourself, which we all probably need to be doing during this very strange pandemic time. So you might have frequent illnesses. So that just means like you're sick all the time or you can't get out. As soon as you get over your cold, you get bronchitis or something because you're just, you're worn down physically. Um, you might be exhausted. You might have changes in appetite. So you're so, so, it's just so interesting that some people are so stressed they can't possibly eat. And then so some people will just like eat whatever's in sight. Um, and so you can see different things. People might lose weight or gain weight. And it's a weird thing in our culture because we might, you might get compliments for your stress related weight loss. And that's not necessarily helping in any way either. Um, but you can have different, you can mess up your GI your system with diarrhea or constipation or nausea. It just really manifests itself in a lot of different ways. Um, emotionally, you might have um, depression but it might not always be clinical. You might just have general unhappiness or sadness. You can't snap out of your moods. You're not really interested in anything. You don't enjoy anything. And I think we see a lot of that with the additional stress of the pandemic, that it's just like a sense of malaise and not wanting to do anything. You might be anxious or agitated. You have a very short fuse. And so you're fine with what's on your to-do list. But if anyone bumps into you, anyone needs anything extra, it's game over. Um, you might be moody or irritable just generally insecure, you might just feel worthless because you, you've convinced yourself that you're failing in everything because these standards are so high and your stress is so high. Um, other things might be withdrawing from others, neglecting responsibilities and just missing deadlines, um, using substances to relax regularly. So relying on alcohol, cigarettes and drugs, and these are things that kind of start slow and build. Um, you might have nervous habits like pacing or like Adriana said, clenching your jaw and things like that. You might just, your memory, you know it's not a senior moment necessarily. You just can't remember stuff because your brain is just overstimulated and overworked. Um, so that might lead to poor concentration or judgment, anxious mind. It's just a laundry list of things. And you might have some or many of these um, if you're having very high levels of stress. But we're not going to stay forever. We just want you to help you identify when this when this thing that's natural in life, stress for happy and negative events, gets to a point where we really need to do something a little bit different if we don't want to end up um, with some, some chronic stress health effects. Um, so just a, a note on some harmful coping mechanisms. Um, a lot of these things, if they stay in their lane, they can help and be parts, some things that people really enjoy, but they frequently over time create additional problems. They increase the stress you already feel and don't address the reasons for your initial stress. You might feel better for an hour from drinking or eating or buying something new, but that doesn't change the fact that your kids aren't going back to school in person or whatever your, your business is going through a lot of changes you can, and it's those things are really inhibiting your ability to focus on um, those things. And then you might end up with more debt or chronic health problems or something like this. Um, and then like tobacco use frequently leads to lung cancers or other cancers or asthma and different things. So you can just see how these things that if you do once or twice, um, might be okay, suddenly they become something a lot bigger. So we, we want to steer clear of these harmful coping mechanisms, but that's not to say that you can't treat yourself with some kind of um, pastry or ice cream or an extra beer or something when things are going on. It's just, you know, when it becomes a habit. And if you have people in your life who you, you're noticing these things, they might need help um, coping in a different way. So we wanted to kind of pivot at this point to the tangible, helpful things that you can do that might help you stress less and live more. So the first is eating well. I'm sorry, these meeting controls I know will block what you can see. So we're going to talk more about my plate in our next one, um, but trying to just get more fruits and vegetables 
And you can see that on that MyPlate graphic, half of that plate is fruits and vegetables. And that's kind of a, a shorthand for if your plate is looking like that, even if you have like chicken fried steak and macaroni and cheese on the other side, it's overall pretty balanced in terms of calories and vitamins and fiber and those types of things. And so you might focus on getting one more vegetable or making sure that you're eating fruit or trying to lower your salt or sugar intake and drinking plenty of water. So that might mean something like I'm going to have one soda per day instead of two or something like that. And then just looking at how much caffeine or alcohol or nicotine you might be consuming because it's one of those things that feels good in the moment and then there's usually a crash or something like that that it just really builds up to be something that we don't want to handle. And so if we're fueling our body well, then we're, help, we're helping all of our digestion and our brain have good power to it. And it just helps our faculties all run properly, which can help us have better stress management. Definitely. Um, I don't know about you, Mary Beth, but when I have caffeine, oh, goodness, it compounds that stress for me. <laughs> all I feel is my heart. There's definitely a sweet spot. And you know, if you're one of those people that can handle, like I'm a coffee drinker and you're not. And I know that about, like, I know that you just can't do it, but I can, but I'm not. If I started drinking like a whole, I was so tired that I had to drink a whole coffee pot to get through the day. That's kind of one of those warning signs and things like that. Yeah. Um, another thing is just moving your body. And it's one of those things that's the first thing to get thrown out the window when we feel stressed. We say, I don't possibly have any time for exercise. And that's because I think a lot of us really assume that it has to be this main event that you have to change clothes. You have to get sweaty. It's going to ruin your hair. Like it's a whole thing that you need a two hour block in your day that nobody has if you're going to be physically active. And so one thing that it does is it can really take your attention away from the stress in any moment. So any amount helps. And so I'm sure many of you have heard that we're supposed to, the physical activity guidelines for Americans are 150 minutes per week. And that sounds a little abstract. One way to think about that is that you go for a 30 minute walk five days a week. And it's like not just super leisurely, like you're breathing a little bit heavier at the end of it. But what's really, really great is that the research shows that that doesn't have to be all at once. If you um, go for a walk or do something for 10 minutes, that's enough. Those 10 minute chunks are enough to have kind of worked your heart that you're going to have some beneficial effect from it. And so one great thing to try to do is to get 20 minutes of walking per day. And just one of the things that I do is I have an alarm in my phone at 10 and two that just says walk for 10 minutes. And so I don't always obey that alarm, but it is kind of at the front of my mind. And especially if you're working on a long-term project or you're feeling really stressed, it is pretty shocking how quickly you're kind of, you breathe a little bit easier just from like five minutes of being outside because we feel like I can't possibly, but that refreshing and that ability to kind of move thoughts around in your mind while you're moving your body, it kind of rearranges things. And so it's one of those things that if you're feeling really stressed, just taking a few minutes, five minutes, six minutes, hopefully 10 minutes if you can get it to go for a walk or something is great. But we want to make sure that you know that physical activity and moving your body doesn't mean lifting heavy weights necessarily, going to the gym. It can be chasing grandkids around. It can be lawn work. It can be gardening. It can be biking or dancing. Dance parties are always a good idea in our book. And so whatever it means to move your body, looking for those 10 minute chunks can really help. And so if you get into a habit, so the first bullet point is kind of about when you're feeling stressed, how physical activity can help. But the second one is more about the long-term benefits of being physically active in general. So if you are taking those 10 minute walks or you're taking like 30 minute walks once the sun is kind of down and it's not quite as many million degrees here in Georgia, or if you happen to be an early riser to, to go for those 30 minute walks in the morning, if you're doing that, there's a general trend of feeling more in control, having higher self-esteem because you're proud of what your body can do. Um, you have more energy. There's a, a more positive outlook on life. And so it's one of those things that like feels like such a drag, but the results that you get, the benefits are pretty immediate if you can stick to even those 10 minute chunks, just a 10 minute walk that you weren't taking. So I encourage you to really just think about that and give it a try and let us know how it goes. Um, another one is sleep. We all know that if we're not getting enough sleep, we're really irritable. If we have kids, we know that if they don't get enough sleep, they're super irritable if we miss nap time or something like that. So 
we've probably all heard these tips. That's true for a lot of this wellness stuff, but it bears repeating and you never know when something's really going to get into your brain and say, I really want to try that. I feel willing to try that. I have a friend in the chamber who's going to do that with me, whatever it might be. And so being consistent and trying to kind of set a bedtime and a loose like waking up time, especially if you are like a lot of people, especially like when you're younger in college, you know, they, they sleep all day on Saturday, but they had to get up at six during the week or something like that. It's better to kind of stay in that same range all the time to try to get six to eight hours of sleep. Um, and it's interesting, not everyone needs the same amount exactly, but there is kind of a range that your body needs to be restored. Um, you want to think about limiting the use of light emitting electronics before bed. So like TV, and your phone and your computer and things like that and thinking about what can I do to make time to wind down, to brush my teeth, maybe take a bath or have some tea or just be reading something. A lot of people don't have a lot of time to read for pleasure, but even that five minutes before bed is different than five minutes on your phone before bed. And something like a Kindle that may or may not be backlit um, with a reading lamp, that's a different type of light than an illuminated screen. See. And then the last one that I'm going to do before I turn it over to Adriana is the um, organizing and prioritizing of what's going on in your brain. Because I'm one of those people that just gets like this high level of stress that has no real purpose. I'm just feeling like I can't handle whatever's going on in the moment. And so there's this concept out there called the brain dump where you get, you might have a template or you might just have a plain piece of paper and you write down everything you can possibly think of that's on your brain. Everything from I need to pick up this prescription, I need to call this person, I have to send this invoice, I have to pay this bill. Some of it is personal, some of it's professional, but it's all in your head at the same time. It doesn't matter if it's work hours. And so if you take three minutes, five minutes, two minutes, you set a timer and you just write everything, you can kind of get it out on paper and start thinking about what of these things go into my to-do list? What of these things can I knock out really quick? And there'll be distractions that aren't there anymore so I can focus on these tasks at hand. Um, which things are big projects that I can break in into smaller pieces to feel accomplished? Um, maybe setting some time-oriented goals for important things or setting your appointments in your calendar. So all those things that I have to call the vet, I have to do this, I have to do that. Have an organized place to go. Um, and that also helps you see which of the things on your list are in your control and which aren't, or which ones do you really need to be the one that is doing those things, or is part of it I need to ask for help, delegate things, see if my significant other or my coworker or my assistant can do something like that. And another one of those things is probably saying no more than we do. And so a lot of um, high achievers really want to be people pleasers as well. And it just really doesn't end up helping anyone if you say yes to everything rather than taking the time to figure out what you're uniquely qualified to do. And I think another thing that's really helpful is getting to a place where you can see, maybe I'm going to be stressed for this, like it's a high, like a CPA is during tax season, like it just is what it is. I'm going to try to get my walk in when I can, but like it will be over once tax day is over. That's different than I just operate here for work all the time and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to crash and burn at some point. Um, you want to try to avoid time wasters and procrastination. Um, and so some of those things, one of those things might be having your phone on loud or having your email make notification noises all the time because it feels like everything's really urgent. They all sound the same. And so you don't know. And so setting times where you're going to check your emails and respond to your emails rather than letting it hang over your head and overlay everything all day can be one of those things that makes a big difference in feeling like you have control and are knocking stuff out the way that you want to. But another thing is to make time for things that are important to you. If you're not happy, if you're not satisfied, if you didn't get five minutes to yourself to do something that you enjoy, even if it's just sitting outside with your coffee or your water or whatever, like you are just as, you're an important item on this list as well. And so you have to think about that and start integrating that because a lot of us just got out of that habit. And it's just like the oxygen mask thing. If you don't take care of yourself first, you can't steward your business. You can't take care of your family. It, you're going to be so much more effective if you make time for things that are important to you. So uh, one of the, the things that 
that we can do to, you know, really reduce that stress is to talk to other people. And that is something that I think we have really, during this pandemic, even though we can't really be physically in the same space, I think that talking to other people is something that we're, we've really gotten back into. So that's really exciting. Um, so you can find that support, you know, share your problems or your feelings with somebody else. Maybe it's your partner, maybe it's a family member or a friend, or maybe, you know, you feel like they have enough on their plate and that's okay. You know, we can find a counselor, we can find a doctor, we can find, you know, um, somebody from your church or your, your place of worship. Um, just make sure that you don't isolate yourself, unless of course you have to isolate yourself for 14 days. Um, but <laughs> sorry, that's just the health department in me. But don't, you know, even if you have to physically isolate yourself, don't mentally isolate yourself. You know, take your mind off of your problems just by spending some time with those that you love. So if it's people that are already in your household right now, maybe it's doing a, a fun movie night, or maybe it's doing a, a Zoom game night with your friends or making time to call uh, a friend while you're going for a walk, you know, making sure that even though this is a, a tough time where we can't be with other people, that we can still kind of spend that time with others. And maybe you don't have someone right now that you feel comfortable enough to share your problems with. Maybe try writing in a journal. You know, sometimes that feels almost as great as talking to someone else or sometimes even better because you get to do that processing on your own. So what we're all going to talk about right now is the thing that we have such a hard time doing in the middle of the day, which is taking a break. Just a couple of minutes. Sometimes, like Mary Beth said, she likes to set an alarm, you know, at you know, 10 and 2 to go for a nice walk. Um, I try to set an alarm. I don't really listen to it. Um, it goes off and I'm in the middle of something and I'm like oh no but that reminds me that maybe oh well I forgot about doing this before let me do it later so just schedule a couple of minutes in a day you know where even if you know my alarm goes off when I, I need to go out for a little break to go for a walk you know maybe I just stand up and I stretch and I walk in place or I go and I walk to the water fountain you know something that's just small and can help us move around um, maybe put down your phone I get very stressed when I'm on my phone sometimes. Sometimes that's scrolling. I get, I'm, I'm like, well, everyone else is on vacation. Should I be on vacation? It can kind of compound my stress, my work stress, my personal stress. I don't need that. So just put down your phone or maybe turn on some music and then put down your phone. Or maybe something's actually happening when stress arises, you know? So maybe we just had a really stressful meeting and there are things that we're gonna have to change in the company. Maybe just remove yourself from the situation. Maybe go and get a glass of water, make, make a nice cup of tea, go for a quick walk, even if it's a minute walk, once again, just walking at your desk and just kind of remove yourself from that situation. And if that stress gets to be too much, I know that this is really hard for so many people. We're not really bred to do this. We're not taught to do this, but you can ask for help and nobody's gonna think less of you. Nobody's gonna think that you're weak. You know, It's going to be something where you know, it might be a little strange in the moment, but you're gonna feel so much better for asking for that help. And I think like you all have relationships within the chamber that have made you wanna stay. And so looking out for each other in your leads groups or whatever you're doing, that network exists for more than just um, your business Networking. interests. They care about <laughs> you as a person because you're a key part of that business as well. Yeah. So you can always use that to bounce different ideas off of each other, to talk about the stress. Maybe you're going through something similar, you know, it's, it's always good to have someone to talk to. So that's a really great idea, Mary Beth. I love it. Okay. So we need to recharge. So this is the after work, right? This is the after work where we, we go home and maybe we stayed at work too late. Um, you know, maybe we, we feel like, you know, there's a lot going on and, oh, I have to go home and I have to make sure that my kids have done their online schoolwork and I have to make sure that dinner's done and the pets have been taken out and has anybody fed the dog? I don't know, I didn't, but we have to make sure that we build in some time to recharge, right? So we put our work phone down, we, you know, put everything down for just a minute because you have to fill your little bank, right? 
you can think about your body as like an energy bank where stress kind of takes some of that energy out and I don't know where it goes, but it doesn't go back to me. So we have to make sure that we find things that we enjoy that build that energy bank back up. They can be fun things, they can, you know, help us and they're not a waste of your time. They're enjoying there and you make it happy. Um, you can try relaxing activities. So we're gonna do one at the end of this, um, but you can do deep breathing, muscle relaxation, yoga, tai chi, massage, not right now, um, meditation, so anything like that um, that can really, you know, help us to, to recharge and relax. So we have to remember, you know, we, we can't be all work and no play. We have to try to have something nice. Um, so now we're going to look at a couple ways to do quick stress relief. Um, I want uh, in the chat while I talk, I would love for some of you guys to give a couple ideas of things that you do for quick stress relief so we can kind of share and talk about them. Um, we talked about going for a walk. Um, so being in nature really kind of helps bring that blood pressure down naturally. Maybe listen to some music or meditate. Um, you know, I, I love that. I love to take a couple of minutes and my, the people who are work in the offices around me, they know when they hear the music, it's, it's time to leave her alone for a quick second. Um, uh, maybe eat a healthy snack, you know, if you need to just get up and maybe you're stressed out and maybe you haven't eaten, maybe you forgot to eat lunch, maybe you didn't have time to eat lunch. I like to keep, you know, some little fruit cups or little things around, um, you know, maybe some, you know, cheese in the fridge or some almonds, just something that I can have a quick snack for. Um, sometimes you'd be surprised. Just breathe, breathe in and out slowly. I don't, yeah, I don't know if any of you guys are into Brene Brown, but she like doesn't want to breathe, but the research says that you have to. And so she was like, when the, this, um, Navy SEALs and the yoga instructors say the same thing about box uh -huh. breathing, of breathing in for four, holding, breathing out for four. Like when it comes from such different spheres, you know that it's based in truth. Definitely, definitely. So thank you for that, Laura. That was super cool. Um, I like to just kind of cuddle up, um, especially now, um, maybe a soft sweater or a blanket that kind of helps you feel really, really great. Um, maybe a candle or some essential oils, maybe some lavender, something to really, you know, relax you if that's what you like. Um, hug a person, hug a pillow, hug a pet, you know, hug whoever's around as long as, you know, you're in the same household right now. It's kind of tough, but just, you know, get something, um, just, just feel really good. Okay. Stephanie says she'll pick up her book and read a chapter or two. That's great. Um, that's my personal way of relieving stress. Just, you know, picking up something and, and reading. I love that. Um, maybe make a cup of tea or a glass of water, squeeze a stress ball, um, dance around, maybe stretch or just, you know, do a little self massage, right? Just massage your own neck for a couple of minutes. Just something little bitty to do. And just another thought for work. I don't know how big everyone's office is or what kind of environments you have, but I have chairs on both sides of my desk. So sometimes I take my snack or my book. It, I don't care what time it is. If I'm not being productive at my desk, it helps everyone for me to take that five minute, 10 minute break. And I'll eat my snack in a chair on the other side away from my computer or I read over the there. And it just, thing. that little stuff where it's not like you can't see the email right then just mm -hmm. makes a big difference, even though it's really small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's huge. I love it. Um, and then Mary Beth is going to talk really quick about um, parents and children and stress. And then we're going to get ready to wrap up and do a quick exercise. Yes. So um, there are lots of resources out there that we can send um, about children and stress. Um, they just, I mean, if we're still having to teach and talk about um, what to look for. You can imagine how children and preteens and teens probably don't have the vocabulary to explain what's going on either. They might just say, my stomach hurts and their stomach is hurting all the time. Or um, just there are different signs that are out there. And if you have children in your life, you know when they're acting a little off or a little bit different. And so, um, all the time but in times of stress, but also during this weird time, whatever you can do to maintain a normal routine. Um, so there are things to look forward to. There are ways that we're going to move our bodies and um, wind down before bed and things like that. But making things landmarks to look forward to, like we are going to get takeout from this restaurant and they get to pick what it is, or we are going to do this movie night and trying to do what you can to be fun. 
So we don't necessarily mean that every minute has to be scheduled with those color-coded schedules that everyone loved to throw around in March. We know that those aren't going to work for most people, but having some guideposts of what to look forward to in some kind of routine is really helpful, especially, I mean, for adults too, but especially for kids. Um, and just having time to talk and listen and encourage expression and try to validate your feelings, validate their feelings, um, and listening to them and sharing your feelings. It's okay to share that you're scared or you're anxious too, but you don't want to have the, the news on all the time or just like you, you need to try to be um, a good role model for stress relief so they can feel like you're an expert in some way too. Um, but just like watching and listening and change and looking for any changes in behavior and reassuring um, as best you can that these are the precautions we're taking to stay safe or whatever the case may be and trying to um, look into resources on what's an age appropriate amount of information because I know we've all seen um, those studies about the increased stress in young adults because they just have all this information all the time and they know about gun violence and the ice caps and everything in the world and they're like what am I possibly going to do and so the truth is a lot of those self-care strategies for stress relief are important for them to learn from a young age. It doesn't matter that they're only 12, like they have all this information that's out there that's stressing them out. So um, sometimes that self-care, you know, that self-help isn't always enough, right? And that's completely okay. If you're feeling overwhelmed by that stress, if it's severe, if it's long lasting, or even if there's something that's happened that's traumatic and, and it's happened recently or it's happened in the past, please you know, go and, and seek a professional, seek a counselor, seek a doctor, seek a therapist. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, right now, so many therapists are doing virtual sessions. So if it feels more comfortable to do at home, you, know, you can squeeze it in while you know, the kids are you know, getting washed up, it's oftentimes they can do things after hours or on weekends. So just to, to go ahead and, and do that. Um, oftentimes through, you know, your in insurance or your employee assistance programs, there are different things. And then we also wanted to offer you some free resources right now. Um, the COVID emotional support line uh, is so, so great. They are wonderful, wonderful professionals that are working around the clock right now in Georgia to um, provide that emotional support. There's also, you know, Viewpoint Rockdale, the National Crisis Line, um, the Georgia Access Line, and then we also have a, a Georgia Crisis Text Line, which we tend to, you know, promote as something for teens, but maybe we can use it ourselves. Um, it's often, it's, it's easy. You know, it's something that you can just text and, and somebody's going to get back to you. Somebody's going to call you back. So there's, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with using these resources. They are great resources and they're here for a reason. Yeah, um, we're also going to make sure that we provide those resources um, in the, the slides that we send out afterwards. Absolutely. And a lot of people, there's still a big, um, maybe stigma might be a strong word. I mean, some, there's stigma for sure in some mental health care, but um, you don't have to have a death in the family or some big event um, to seek counseling every week or every other week. A lot of people just think of it as you take your car for maintenance. This is my maintenance for me. I don't have to um, always be talking about this stuff with my spouse. I can get a um, second opinion from a professional and they can kind of stop me in my tracks as I'm going on these rabbit holes of things that might not be helpful. It's just something that a lot of people having that time that is an hour for you and they're there to help you sort out what's going on, it doesn't always have to be for some major traumatic event. It doesn't. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. And you can also find, you know, if maybe you feel uncomfortable based on, you know, religion or things like that, you can always find a, a therapist that is within your religion. Um, and they usually tell you that in little letters and it's, it's really great. So you can find someone that identifies with what you need and, and go from there. So that's really, really great, Mary Beth. Thank you. So, so just to give you, I know it's 1256. We have a couple more things. We're going to do a, a quick um, breathing exercise. We have an evaluation that's short that you can do now or later. We'll email that out. But if you do fill out our evaluation, um, you can be entered in a prize drawing. Um, and we're going to talk about what's coming up next. But if you have to go, we understand, but we, we do know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And this is honestly, this is the part that you probably, this is what you really want before you go. So really quick, um, we're going to just take a minute and we're going to close our eyes. And just take a deep breath in through your nose 
and out through your mouth. In through your nose again. And out through your mouth. You're gonna tense and relax each area that I mentioned. When you tense, don't cause any pain. Just tighten to feel dis uh, just tension. No discomfort, and if you do feel that discomfort, please stop or, or ease up. But first I want you to raise your shoulders up towards your ears. Tighten the muscles there, hold, feel that tension. Breathe in, and on your exhale, release those shoulders. Let them drop to a lower, more comfortable position. Now, tighten your hands into fists. Very, very tight, as if you're squeezing a rubber ball, very tightly between each hand. Hold, feel the tension in your hands, Feel it in your forearms. Take a deep breath in. And as you release, let go and shake your hand gently, feeling that tension and feeling that relaxation in your hands. Now, I want you to raise your eyebrows. Feel those, eye, those uh, muscles in your forehead tighten. Hold that tension. Hold those eyebrows and, and scrunch your eyes closed. Hold it tightly. And on your exhale, relax. Let your forehead be relaxed and smooth. Your eyelids resting gently. Now, close your mouth. Clamp your jaw shut gently, but very tightly. Your lips will also be tight and tense across the front of your teeth. Feel that tension in your jaw. Take a deep breath in. And now relax. Let your mouth and your jaw be loose and relaxed. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at is breathing in. So breathe in deeply for four. You're gonna hold that breath for four and you're gonna feel that tension as you hold in that air and then relax for four, exhale for four. So we're gonna breathe in, breathe in through your nose, one, two, three, four. Now hold that breath. And now gently exhale for one, two, three, four. Once more, breathe in, one, two, three, four, and exhale. Breathe in, breathe out, feel your body relax, in and out. All right, now slowly open your eyes and just use this throughout your day. You know, whenever you feel that stress, you feel that headache, that jaw, that neck, just take a couple of breaths in and take a couple of breaths out. Awesome. I mean, that was not long and it, I feel lighter. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that. And there are apps out there, if Adriana is not available to read these things to you, but there <laughs> are different apps that are free or there are paid subscriptions to do these types of things before bed or at lunch or just in the middle of the day as needed. Yes. Um, so this is the evaluation link. It takes like three minutes. You can do it on your phone. Um, it has a, the program name is Stress Less, Live More. So we can kind of sort them at the end. And then the date is the 23rd. Um, mm -hmm. If you have any more questions, um, you can email us. But um, just a quick note about this. We need to know your, the emails are not, the survey is like, it doesn't have room. I didn't pick the questions. And so there's a, the final question is, how would you summarize your experience in the program in one sentence? And if you could try to put your email address in that block, as well as the answer to that question, that would help <laughs> us. We're going to pick three na random names after each session. And then we have all the participants in a list as well. So you're going to earn prizes the more of your cl these classes you come to with yes. us. And so if you we need love to throw swag. us under the bus for taking these, these breaks at work, Please be like, Adriana said I had to do this. <laughs> yes, said I had to do it. So yes, we don't please. mind being the bad guys because we're in it for your long-term health. 
Yeah, thank you guys so much for spending time with us over the lunch yeah. break. Hopefully you got time to grab some lunch or you can get something after. That's why we wanted to do 45 yes. minutes, not 60. Um, our next class is going to be less stress meal planning, which is like my most favorite topic. I love helping make these things be on autopilot, whether you're a gourmet chef or not. It's going to be chock full of practical tips and times for you to kind of evaluate and think how you want to execute your plan. So Huge. thank you guys so much. Um, Thank we can you. take any, we'll stick around if you guys have any questions. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I'll go back to this one just so you have all the information that you might need. Yeah, and please feel free to email us too if you have any questions and uh, make sure that since we've got the next one coming up next month, you can always uh, tell your friends. But thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you, thank you.